nuanced analysis of harem anime. We are the foundation for Gen 1 Pokemon. You can follow us at 5th Gen, not PKMN. That did not show. Uh, we use the My Anime List font for this. They don't have at signs. They don't want you to follow us on Twitter because we are going to systematically destroy their biggest genre. It's a conspiracy. Go. So, uh, this is the model we're going after. We are the Sean Hamdy and Tucker Carlson of Anime Critiques. The difference is we still have sponsors. <laughs> um, they just have Axe body spray at this point, and let's be honest, even Axe should bail on that ship. So, before we start really talking about harem anime, we have to define what a harem anime is. Uh, so the first thing you're going to have is multiple love interests. Generally three or more, but uh, that, that's clearly one, so we'll do two there. So multiple people who are romantically interested in the protagonist. A love triangle, if you will. Um, it can get a little more complicated than that. Um, <laughs> in the case of Negiyama, it takes a professional cartographer to figure out what the fuck is going on. Uh, but those are still all triangles. They're just a lot of them. Uh, the next thing that you have is kind of a lover's tug of war thing going, where uh, you have multiple people that they're interested in the character and they have to be exerting it. Because if they're interested and don't do anything, then there's no drama. And if there's no drama, what's the point of watching a harem anime? Now, I'm going to kind of, since it's a tug of war thing, uh, we're going to you know explain it using tug of war. Tension is the force that the other romantic interests are exerting on the protagonist. Friction is the force you are exerting on the protagonist. The weight is how clueless they are about the whole thing. And the ground is just the ground. It's tug of war. You can't do it not on the ground. Um, next, of course, uh, you have to have unresolved romantic subplots. What do you want? Can, can you throw it on the ground? Uh... I'm an adult. You don't <laughs> own me, hot dog man. Okay. Sorry. So the next thing you have, you're, you're just a lonely island amid a sea of memes. Apparently. Dude, come on, that's mid to late 2000s. You should know that. Oh, Maybe. you bastard. I just saw what you did there. It took you that long. You're a lonely island. You <laughs> fuck. Guys, let's all clap for him. Yeah. Give him a round of applause. Slow clap. I think you guys should just leave him here. Don't take him back. Yeah, I like that plan. Okay. So you have to have some unresolved romantic tension or some reason that they can't get together. Because if the characters get together, then the harem's a little over because suddenly the characters are together. So uh, this can be done in multiple ways. I, the girls are unwilling to actually act upon their will. The guy can't make a decision or, I don't know, space or some shit. There, there's a lot of arbitrary bullshit. So components of a harem anime. Let's go. You have to have a main character. I'm just going to keep pointing at you. You have to have uh, multiple potential objects of affection. You have to have a contrived reason the plot can't resolve. And you have to have a hot springs episode. And if you have all four of these... God damn it. There were, there were axes earlier. Then congratulations, you have made a harem anime. But where did this come from? Well, to talk about harem anime, we of course have to talk about the origin of it. And so, where did this come from? Romeo and Juliet... Some shit from Mesopotamia, Oedipus Rex. Uh, no, like all great things, it started in the 1990s. In this case, with Ranma One Half, a 1988 anime made by Rumiko Takahashi. Now, Ranma One Half is a no-nonsense, heavy, emotionally hitting uh, love story, and it was so good that it created essentially a legion of imitators. A lot of uncreative hacks who just copied the formula like Shakespeare. Um, so, of course, I'm going to now tell you the greatest love story ever told. <laughs> Ranma, one half, or Ranma, like Timmy, fell in a wellspring and now has the uh, unfortunate disposition of changing his gender depending on which temperature of water he is exposed to. Uh, so there is boy, girl, boy Ranma and girl Ranma now, it's important to remember that Boy Rama and Girl Rama are, in fact, different people. I mean, are, in fact, the same person. There's no multiple personality disorders here. <laughs> Sam, exactly they're the same. So I can trip up on words. Sam, you had you... one job. Hey, hey, you pronounced Negima Nagama, okay? Like, <laughs> I'm white. In my defense. 
So, the next character we have is Akane Tendo. Now, Akane and Ranma's parents uh, are best friends, and so to prove their friendship, they decided the best way to go about that was to ruin their children's lives forever. Uh, so they have arranged them to marry. Uh, they, of course, have a hate boner for each other. Uh, Akane Tendo thinks that Ram is kind of a chauvinist dick, and Ram is, of course, a chauvinist dick, so he doesn't put up with that. <laughs> Next, we have Takawaki Kuno. Uh, now, Takawaki Kuno used to be all about that Akane action until one fateful day he saw a girl Ranma emerge from a pool of water. And can you blame him? She's adorable. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we, we changed the format of this file several times in the last 24 hours, so stuff like that's going to happen. Now, Tatawaki Kuno, like Scotty, yeah. doesn't know that I am banging his girlfriend Fiona in my van every Sunday, and also <laughs> didn't pay attention to the end of the slide and doesn't know that boy Ranma and girl Ranma are different people. I'd argue he did pay attention, because you said they are different people. <laughs> I'm the same person. <laughs> um, tongue tied. Anyway, so uh, naturally because he swallowed the red pill, he of course believes that he has to prove he's the alpha male in this scenario, so he's trying to murder Ranma for girl Ranma's affection. Next we have Kadachi Kuno. Now, uh, Kadachi Kuno is all into Ranma because, like, he saved her life or some shit. Um, and because she also swallowed the red pill, um, <laughs> believes she needs to prove she's the alpha female in this scenario, so she wants to murder You mean girl. the alpha male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I stutter. <laughs> <laughs> You're holding an imaginary mic. <laughs> That's how we stay in character. Looks like I'm the alpha male. So she, of course, wants to uh, uh, defeat female Ranma to prove that she's the alpha in this scenario because girls can be incels too. Hashtag feminism. <laughs> Next, we have Ryoga. Now, Ryoga has some sort of a grudge match with Ranma, but. Rama doesn't really give a shit, and neither should you. Um, he's also interested in Akane, but Akane has put him in the friend zone because he's a disgusting pig. Next we have Shampoo. <laughs> now Shampoo, because of some very real Amazonian cultural norms, um, has to marry any man who defeats her in combat and defeat and kill any woman who defeats her in combat, much like Rednecks. Ranma really dressing the part, got the rat tail, wife beater. So of course, uh, Shampoo wants to marry male Ranma and murder female Ranma. Uh, she's also not above murdering other girls in the cast, despite their relationship to Ranma or Ranma's relationship to them. Next we have Ukyo, Ranma's childhood friend. They married, decided to marry each other when they were five, and she's taking that shit very seriously. Ranma, on the other hand, sees her more like a little sister, and since we're not in that uh, era of animation yet, this is a completely platonic relationship. Uh, now, Ukyo, unlike other characters in Ranma, has what you might call a uh, healthy relationship in that she is friends with Akane Tendo. Next, we have Ranma's famous, most lecherous character, Brock. Uh, <laughs> now, Brock just wants to get in every other character's pants, except Ryoga's, because... He's a disgusting pig. Now, obviously, this is a triangle. There's one there and there. Don't look too closely at that. They will find you. <laughs> so this uh, whole format spawned a legion of imitators. Some famous examples include Tenshi Muyo, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> the Brady Bunch, <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Pokemon. <laughs> Okay, so after this, while innovation of the genre was a terrible idea, instead what happened was aspiring harem anime creators decided to play on different tropes in this to make their own. So you got several different types of harem anime. The first is the main girl type. Now the main girl is where you have a protagonist and a primary love interest 
Uh, generally, they're going to be the OTP. She's normally like the first girl. And then all the other girls in the background are just kind of there for brief one-off things or storylines. Uh, these series generally focus more on the relationship between the protagonist and the primary love interest and have uh, more romantic undertones than other harem series. Next, we have main girls. The difference between this is there are slightly more main girls, but still not a lot of them. Uh, good examples in include the revolutionary Yuri series Fruits Basket, because those are all girls. And also animals. So, uh, hi. Where are you from, Redding? Um, the next one, of course, is the Balanced Harem. Now, the Balanced Harem is where you have a bunch of different girls that all are in equal standing with relationship with the main character. Uh, these tend to have more of a comedy focus because it's hard to have a serious romance when there are seven equally placed suitors. Um, and the real uh, objective of these shows is that you can insert yourself in the protagonist and imagine yourself with any of the girls and you don't have to worry about some OTP ruining your fun. Next we have reverse harems. Uh, now, everyone, uh, this is audience participation. Would you quickly take a look to your left and then a look to your right? Um, everyone you just saw, including you, uh, has been part of a reverse harem. I don't think we really need to go over the tropes for these ones too much, just because you all know what they are. The only difference is that the characters, the suitors in a, harem, in a reverse harem, tend to be, or, well, they're always more attractive and more charming than you. Now, some of you might have some contention for me putting Inuyasha here, and I'd like to argue that Inuyasha is in fact a reverse harem surrounded around Kagome. There's the OTP, Inuyasha. Uh, another dude, K uh, Koga, her, high, her friend in high school, her friend in high school's ancestor, Shippo, <laughs> uh, on an off day in Roku. And of course, uh, Kikyo, she's trying to fill her with arrows, and that's basically the same thing. Solid penetration jokes. Okay, so the the cousin of reverse harem is of course sports anime. Uh, sports anime are generally focused around a lot of attractive male characters doing things, but instead of being obsessed with the female protagonist making it a little too close to home for most people, they're obsessed with a sport. Uh, this makes it a lot easier for you to imagine yourself in a relationship with one of them because they're not getting all creepy and weird hitting on the self-insert female protagonist. Uh, another variant of this is, of course, uh, Slice of Life anime. A good example like Azumanga Daio, where you just kind of sit there and you want to watch cute high school do girls doing cute high school things, like adding you to pedophile registries. <laughs> um, now, this is, again, like sports anime. They remove the protagonist, so then you don't have to worry about seeing your waifu dating anyone else. So it's just, you know, it's perfect slice of life for the people who can't emotionally handle seeing a character they've emotionally invested in and for some reason get in a relationship. Though there is one appropriate shipping in this, which is, of course, in Cromarty High School, anyone is allowed to ship themselves with Freddie Mercury. His eyes are so dreamy. <laughs> can tell everyone who laughed has watched Cromarty High School. <laughs> everyone who hasn't watched the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Uh, so next we have character tropes. Uh, so all of the girls, all, all of the love interests, we're going to use girls and love interests interchangeably, not because I have an issue with reverse harems, but because I think reverse harems are a little better made. So we're just going to rip on normal harems. Addendum, I don't get why they call it a reverse harem just because the girl is the love interest. That's kind of weird. Uh, so what's the first trope? Oh, uh, trans oh, we have a transfer panelist? Hello. My name is Andrew. I actually like hair and anime. <laughs> that was I the have, worst introduction I've ever I heard. No idea Go back to your be. seat. And by the way, reverse harem is terrible. It's called Diabolical Everything. Don't watch it. <laughs> okay, so would you like to tell us about yourself? So transfer girls, or transfer men, depending on the harem you're watching. I like to categorize them into three. There's the main transfer. They'll come up in chapter one of your manga. They'll be here, episode one of your anime. They're like, they are the Chitoge of Nisekoi. They're not the best girl, but they're definitely the first girl there. They're somehow going to win. 
And you've got your mid childhood friend transfer student that finally came up just to spice up that harem. <laughs> they'll be there episode three, and they'll ride along. And then you've got Contrived Transfer Girl, episode six. She's just there to spice up. She has no actual meaning. She has no plot, but she's there. Okay. She will fight for you. Not well. This was a mistake. Yes. Just like being born. Okay, next one. We have the older sister type. The older sister type is, of course, the girl who gives you life advice and acts wise beyond her years. She's generally not, well, she's not necessarily older than you. She can be, but she could also not be. Uh, her whole thing is just like, oh, I'll give you advice, and also I want to fuck you, so the advice is probably going to undercut all the other girls in the harem, so then I win. <laughs> Next we have the tsundere, the most ubiquitous trope in all of anime. Uh, they're usually the OTP, and they have the emotional maturity of a five-year-old, because they can't really process their emotions effectively, so they exert them through physical violence. Which probably explains why they're so popular to you guys, because you have the emotional maturity of five-year-olds. <laughs> and I'd like Especially to... you, Spencer. <laughs> and I'd like to take a quick aside. Uh, if you were in a relationship with a tsundere, there's a hotline for you. You don't have to accept that kind of behavior in a relationship. Next we have the yandere. That's not a quintuplet. What'd you do? <laughs> you're in a yandere quintuplets. Oh, okay. This one's from, uh, the fuck, I don't care. It's the step, it's the step down. I don't know, Mina's dead in there. Oh yeah, the step down is super yonder, right? Yeah, I don't that was a mistake. One of the girls is slipping there in the manga. Oh, it's who's getting there? Anyway, so the yonder appears uh, kind and well-adjusted at first, but as with any sociopath, you'll find out that this is a farce. Um, they're actually well a jealous sociopath, and they believe that your time is their possession. So if you, anything that you're doing to them is uh, them affording you the ability to do something that's not spending your, all of your time with them. Uh, so the second you start spending your time to like do classwork, get a job, talk to other girls, talk to other boys, she'll start you know pulling out knives, threatening murder, and well, she'll probably kill you, kill all your friends, and then maybe kill herself. It's murder suicide, you know, whole thing. You know, normal stuff. Uh, exactly. Next we have Glasses Girl. Glasses Girl, Shrinking Violet, Shy, whatever the fuck. It's the girl who's generally, like, a little smarter than the other girls. Kind of nerdy. Really withdrawn. Low energy. Just a total Jeb Bush. Um, this is in <laughs> obvious contrast with the Genki Girl, who is just high energy, high test, willing to do anything. Uh, the Genki Girl will go out of her way to help you. She's generally kind of an idiot. And just... Is weird and crazy, kind of spacey, cloud cuckoo lander types. We have a lot of material for this, as you can tell. <laughs> they're not good. Huh? Uh, they're not they're good. No. Them. This shit again. Uh, well, Sundere is so common that sometimes it happens twice. Especially when it's the first girl. Uh, next, we have actual younger sister. Not to be confused <laughs> with the younger sister trope. Uh, in this case, you actually have no excuse. Uh, sometimes. You, in, you know, she's not like your cousin or your stepsister. She's not adopted. You're not in Alabama or Habsburg. <laughs> uh, why the hell is this a thing? Oh, there's a really good one. It's called My Sister is Among Them. It's a hair man. We have to figure out which girl. Fix the protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but the whole goal of that is so that he doesn't end up dating his sister. Still or is Did it? we say your logic continue? <laughs> Sam, continue talking about. Uh, so why is Please this? So, <laughs> why is this a thing? Why, like, why do so many people want to fuck their real fucking sister? That she's a trope. <sighs> okay. Uh, so then there's the childhood friend. The childhood friend is, you know, the girl who left when you were five or six and you were BFFs, and then they come back and puberty hit her like a milk truck. <laughs> and, it hit, and it hit you like a tractor. Um, and you've decided that you should date her because she's attractive and you were friends once. And you failed to realize the fact that maybe she grew older, or that, um, you know, you can have fe platonic female friends. That's a thing you can do. I mean, I haven't done it. I think it's overrated. But I heard it's a thing. 
So you can do that. You don't need to try to fuck your friend just because you were friends once. It's, it's weird. Um, so now we're going to talk about protagonists. Again, we're not going over female uh, reverse harem protagonists because normally they're developed in some way. Sure, they hit a lot of tropes, like they're almost always poor, hardworking, and smart. But um, that's it. The, the, huh? They're more actually just objects normally. I mean, wi women, women are objects in every anime. We're doing harems. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Point is they have some design and character variety. Okay, so this guy has no design or character variety. He is basically a D&D character that you downloaded online because you were too lazy to come up with your own. <laughs> so the first problem with the uh, typical anime protagonist, or harem protagonist, is that they all look like Kirito. <laughs> I don't even know if Kirito's in there. These guys are cute. Yeah. But they all look the same, so Kiriti's there in spirit. Uh, they're really just boring, you know, black, dark, messy hair. Uh, they just don't really stand out in any particular way. Average height, average build, maybe a little on the skinny side. So, next uh, we can talk about their academics and abilities. Uh, they're very middling. They get average grades, maybe they're a little dumber. Uh, they're not particularly good at any one thing except attracting, attracting for some reason, unwanted female attention. Uh, they're just unnoteworthy mentally in every capacity, much like you. Next, they're oblivious to love. Uh, they don't seem to notice when you are giving an aggressive amount of compliments for normal, everyday things, or maybe you're touching them a little more than is normal, or maybe you throw your tits in them and they just don't get it. They just cannot get the, get a clue, man. Uh, they're also cosmically unlucky. Like, the entire universe is a Rube Goldberg contraption to cause them to fall on someone at some point. Uh, nothing goes their way outside of the fact that, again, for some reason, women are interested in them. Which, again, we've been over these people. Why would anyone be interested in them? They're unattractive, unintelligent, unoriginal, schlock. Next, they're uh, accidental perverts, or as I like to call them, accidental perverts. Um, you know, there are lots of contrived scenarios where they end up uh, groping girls in weird ways. Um, and really, it's all there just to fulfill the fantasy of you being able to grab a girl without permission, but it being okay because it was on accident. It's not. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So basically, they're rice gum. Uh, you know... Normal height, dark, messy hair, uh, contrived girls. In this case, they were paid to show up. Um, <laughs> and they just have no personality. As a result, they can really only appeal to uh, people who are children or are mentally children, which probably explains why he has 10 million subscribers. <clears throat> the reality is we just need more interesting protagonists like Nerd City. Let's do it twice. <laughs> um, you know, look at this guy. He's got he's got a lab coat. He's got a weird, funky science hat. He's just got a lot more character going on. He also has a girlfriend. That too. Um, really, we just we just wanted to make more videos. Senpai noticed me. It's been like a month. Okay. So we've gone over the character tropes. Now we're just going to start talking about some specific harem anime because a lot has changed since Ronmo One Half. So, uh, this is a good harem anime. It is Steins Gate, and as you can tell, it's a banana adventure. What? So, so, so Steins Gate is a story about uh, Rintaro, who is trying to defeat CERN using time travel, because I think they just threw some words in a fanfic generator, and that's what came out. Uh, this is a good example of a main girls series, where there are two girls that are primarily after him. You have Christina and Mary. Uh, just as a quick aside, I don't understand how Christina's jacket stays up all the time. Like, if I put my like overalls, like they just fall down. But her jacket stays up, even though it's not on her shoulders. That's really frustrating me. That's the most unrealistic thing about this series. A series with time travel and certain... Anime, anime physics. <laughs> no. And then uh, you have Mary... Oh yeah, and Christina's also, you know, like the Sundere archetype, but also an academic rival. 
Uh, Mary is basically a ganky girl plus childhood friend. Uh, there are a lot of other potential romantic interests. You have the dude, Ferris, uh, the girl who can't talk, Maho. There were a lot of others I considered, like Mr. Braun, Daru, a CRT, CERN themselves. But really, when it came down to it, there was only one true pairing in this series, and that was, of course, Nene. <laughs> Next, we have Death March to a Parallel World Rhapsody, uh, here on to be referred to as Trash. It's both shorter and more accurate. Uh, it's, it's a great manga. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what the manga is, but... You're the worst <laughs> contributor. <laughs> anyway, point is, uh, it stars a 30-year-old man, and I know what you're thinking. That guy's not 30, that's Kirito. <laughs> and the answer is, okay, there are, there's like reasons. You see, he's like a game designer. There we go, it's Kirito. <laughs> I didn't know about that. <laughs> he's like a game designer in the real world, and he falls asleep on the job like a lazy millennial. Um, and, you know, wakes up in a quasi-mix of the two games he's working on, because this is some serious self-insertion fantasy bullshit. Um, and now, because of a mistake in his design, he ends up getting to level, like, Supermax, whatever, who gives a shit and um, meets a 15-year-old girlfriend within the first 15 minutes, and... It sounds like Overlord. <laughs> I mean, they're all the same. <laughs> 15. Every isekai harem is the same. 15-year-old. No. You just haven't embraced him. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do that? This is some Rosario vampire shit. Like, just because you've been put in a 16-year-old's body doesn't mean that it's suddenly okay to date teenagers. Uh, next, if you're an adult and you like adult people, there's Lizard Girl. I don't care what her name is. Um, now, she's the scaly, so you probably shouldn't be interested in her, but at least she's legal. Um, she also happens to be a slave, and don't worry, that's perfectly fine, because her last owner was a dick, and you're going to be nice to her. So that makes it okay. Andrew Jackson did nothing wrong. The South will rise again. <laughs> I got side eye. Really? Next, we have the 11-year-old psychic who uses her powers to force herself on the protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this no. happens for a reason. Like, they don't just put children in anime for no apparent reason. This appeals to somebody. You actually know the children. <laughs> really cool. Okay. Now, next, of course, if eleven is too old for you, we have some six-year-old furry slaves. <laughs> this anime broke me. <laughs> I am broken now. It should. Uh, so now we have a much more after that just emotionally scarring experience. We have a much more wholesome harem in Higurashi no Nakukoro ni. I'm not going to bother translating it, because I don't need to do that. It's, it's just a wholesome experience, and nothing bad ever happens in it. So, uh, you have your main protagonist, Keiichi, and then you have all of his girls. And the cool thing about Hikurashi is the series kind of resets after every few episodes, because all of the romantic subplots are resolved. He ends up with one of the girls, be it Reina, Mion, Shion... Uh, the five-year-olds, the uh, photographer, there are a lot of options. And then they, they just tell the story again with a different girl or from the girl's perspective instead of his. So it's a very fleshed-out series where nothing weird ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> nothing weird. Just wholesome God, family yeah, entertainment. Next we have My First Girlfriend is a Gal. Uh, yeah, I'd say I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> no one can! <laughs> it's not a harem, though. Oh, yes, excuse me, motherfucker. Yeah. There, he's, it's a, a he's already in a relationship. Yeah. He see, still automatically uh, negates the idea of harem. I see fault. eight. Yeah, but he has like six. There. There. <laughs> anyway, it's a harem. It's too rough for a harem. I only see seven. Yes. Uh, anyway, so he's already in a relationship. No, he's not. He has never actually confirmed a relationship with okay. any of those characters. Okay, Spencer, you are not a panelist. <laughs> Your opinions are wrong, <laughs> and nobody likes you. I still see Aww. And we're going to there. leave you on this ship when we go back to Sacramento. It's true, I'm driving. S Sam, please continue telling us about the shittiest fucking thing you've ever watched in your life. 
I, and that's I, including suicides. Wait, well. did you guys watch this, Garbage? Yes! Why? We did research <laughs> hey, to hey, make hey, this hey. a well-researched panel. Listen, you if I'm re- gonna make fun of an anime, I want to actually experience it so I can make fun of it better. You never Except make me Sword watch Art- the shit I talk about. Online, <laughs> <laughs> no one has to watch that. Let's be clear, I watched Death March to a Parallel World Rhapsody, and that was worse than that shit. That's I mean, it had that better just plotting. sounds terrible. Yeah, it had better plotting, but it was more disgusting. Okay. Anyway, so... <laughs> Okay, so we have uh, this pervy teenager. It's uh, about him and his uh, his pervy buddies, one of whom is a confirmed pedophile. Um, and he uh, he gets dared by his friends to ask out the hottest girl in the class, and she says yes because she likes him or something. I don't know why, but that's just what happens. Look at him. I mean, don't. Like, these characters are all very clearly fitting into some kind of fetish, you know, little sister that's not actually your little sister and has... Just humongous assets. Um, Tracks of land. (laughs) Tracks of land. Yes, good. Um, So really, it's just all these characters are fetishes. um, And, like, there's this whole lesbian side plot where this girl's, like, into his girlfriend. So she's going to try to fuck you so you forget about her. So that you fall in love with the lesbian girl. And then you break up with her, break up with your girlfriend, try and get the lesbian girl, but the lesbian girl rejects you so that he can be, she can be with your girlfriend. You know, this is just like, this is some great Alexi. A, well thought out social manipulation. Like, that's, okay, that's you know, how l- l- let's, let's cleanse our palate. Let's talk about another really good harem. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're done. The point is, it's a hentai, and you should just watch hentai instead. Not this, though. This is wholesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I know what you're saying. Oh god, there's hentai god, isn't there? Full- oh, definitely. So I know what you're saying. Full Metal Alchemist isn't a harem not anime. Gonna look, and then but... you're like, well, I guess if you like look at it weird, you could say it's Ed's harem. No, you're wrong. It's Roy Mustang's harem. All of these people are so dedicated to Roy Mustang and wanting to fuck him that they are willing to follow him into staging a coup against the government. <laughs> look at that harem. All of them are ready to lay their lives on the line to put him in charge just for the chance of him doing a, a thing in their place. And four out of six of them are dead. <laughs> <laughs> they died happy. Link two. No. Nox didn't die. Okay. Continuing. Next we have uh, the Anime Convention Academy. Uh, which features my favorite waifu, Stan. Um, now, unfortunately, due to uh, budgeting concerns and time management, uh, the char- a lot of uh, fan favorite characters had to get cut, like Clayton and Andrew. Uh, I'm here. But <laughs> you're not in oh, animation. Oh, we're not talking about you. <laughs> you. You'll be the DLC expansion. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, but we were able to get, um, some good characters like Max, the student council president, Sam, member of the LARP team. I thought he was captain. No, he's... we That scene already happened. Okay. <laughs> that should be clear to anyone because it's incredibly gripping and you should be watching it. Should have been reading Funimation. the whole time. Uh, and, uh, Ted Cruz is totally not the Zodiac killer. <laughs> and, of course, my OTP, Joe Biden. Best girl. No, Stan's the best girl. Uh, speaking of best girls, um, after you watch your harem anime, when you look at the girls and you go, wow, I'd love to date her, you, you start shipping and shit. Uh, and sometimes the best girls just get robbed. I'm sorry, Hillary. So, uh, choosing the best girl is a lot of work, and you have to kind of make this whole intricate conspiracy web. And then once you do that, um, you start shipping them. Marika Tachibana is the best girl. Huh? Marika Tachibana is always Fix the best the protagonist. <laughs> so, um, I forgot my order here. So I'm going to go over a brief history of best girls so you can understand what to look for when you're shipping yourself with someone. And because we're doing history, we're, of course, only going to use what has happened since ni- uh, 1776 because that's when America was invented, therefore that's when history begins, and it will, of course, end when we nuke Russia. So, the first instance, Ronald Reagan. (laughs) Who did he pick for his best girl? He picked Gorbachev. Good pick, 10 out of 10. Uh, 
This is the two of them on a romantic getaway. Uh, this is actually the basis for the film Brokeback Mountain. Just don't tell Reagan's supporters that. They will be upset. Uh, next we have George H.W. Bush. He did not pick the best girl in Saddam Hussein. Uh, that just went poorly, and it actually got Bush's series canceled mid-season. Uh, next we have Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton picked some nameless intern, which is wrong. Uh, he should have... Hillary was okay, I guess. Um, I'm with her-ish. Bill Dog. Bill Dog, yeah. Um, so, not a good pick, but don't worry. She, we don't even know her name. She's that irrelevant. Next, we have George W. Bush. He pulled some graduate-level shit and picked the same girl his dad did, and it went even worse for Saddam this time. His sovereignty got invaded. They took his oil. His nation collapsed, and it's still just fucking chaos. And finally, we have Barack Obama. And he had a lot of potential suitors, be it Justin Trudeau, Angela Merkel, but he did pick the best girl in Joe Biden. Noted. <laughs> no! Noted uh, train and ice cream enthusiast. We won't get to see how the anime ends. Everything is gag slides, so this is bad. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. There's oh, enough no. people here, just hold the laptop. <laughs> I just make my own best girl with Skyrim mod. <laughs> Thanks for that contribution, Alex. Really helping us out <laughs> in oh, filling yeah. the space. Might have overheated. Uh, next. Just gonna wait for it to come back up. Oh yeah, it did. It just overheated, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um. Just say some memes. So uh, the next best girl. No, I'm just gonna keep going. The next uh, character is, of course, Donald Trump. And he's not in the stage of his presidency where he's selected a best girl yet, though I can assure you all of his leading options are terrible. Be they Little Rocket Man, Alex Jones, the gay frog. None of them are good picks. These slides it's are really fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel as though, yeah, the latest episode is really led yeah. towards Kim Jong-un. Yeah. And he had to leave early because of social media. Oh, yeah, what's, people need to stop. Yeah, back up. It's, we're we're, it's, we're it's, sabotaging it's, it's, it. It is? Okay, hold well. Oh, that's a desktop. Oh, it's clean. Yeah, you lost a color. I, I think right, you guys so just need to do the, um, yeah, the well, click down here. where you no, click down decide here. what it's um, like, what's displaying. Is there's a little slideshow button. button. Yeah, 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 yeah that there's a little slideshow button. Yeah. 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 This is the Hit best that. part. Yeah. 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 Oh, believe me, I think our dry run is There we go. Yeah. All right, yeah, so so just, there, there's our Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> we need that image because it's what makes it. And then uh, Little Rocket Man, Gay Frog, Shirtless KGB Agent, and his daughter. Next, uh, we're going to talk about some best girls and how you should feel about them. First, we have uh, the band R.E.M. I, uh, <laughs> they're a really good band. I don't know what anime they appeared in to suddenly become a best girl. Sam, but it's not the band. Wait, it's... It's this? Yeah! Oh, Ram? Yeah! yeah she's actually Wait, what? Okay, defend that! Ram is actually honest with her feelings and she tries to pursue him, but she understands his happiness cannot be convinced with her, so she pushes Where him. are the emails? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Your argument is invalid. So Show guys, me the emails. Guys, I get it. She's willing to be your second wife. From the neck down, she looks like an adult. However, from the neck up, she looks like her true age, 13, which is why you shouldn't have Rem as your fucking waifu. Next, we have Ebony Darkness, Dementia Ravenway. <laughs> uh, now, the problem with her, of course, is that um, she has a fake edgelord name. And that should just be a warning sign right out the bat. <laughs> uh, next, she's a masochist, so she should scare you. I mean, darkness is better than ever. We have Aqua. <laughs> <laughs> Aqua is totally incompetent, really stupid, and when things don't go her way, she has total fucking freakouts. She's just not the kind of person you can rely on, and you're not really going to be in a relationship with her. You're going to be her dad. <clears throat> next, we have Megamine. And while I get it, from a personality perspective, Megamine's pretty good. She's kind of a shit poster. She's fun. Uh, but uh, she's 14, 
And she, she, you don't have an excuse. And she looks 14. 14 is legal in several European countries. And Alabama. The best ones. Alabama. Not Alabama, no. <laughs> oh, really? But in Maine, it is if you're only three years older than them. Let me see. You haven't seen the best girl from Homo Super. Wait, the Who? Lich. Huh? The Undead Lich. I don't remember. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> I've only seen one episode. I, I've seen and I want that time anime. back. Anyway. So now we're going to talk about some actual best girls, like Riku. Uh, he was your wingman. He helped you uh, develop a budding relationship with your girlfriend. Um, he, he was there for you when you were kids, and then the second you guys escape your planet, you go off and hang out with some duck and a weird dog thing. Hey, that's my dad. Well, gorsh. I know what you guys are thinking. Dad, right? is that you? I know what you guys are thinking. I just shit all over you guys for having 14-year-old waifus. And now I'm just pointing out the 14-year-old Riku. Well, here's the thing. There's a whole new game now. Roger Everything's this. been changed. Roger this. The ship will close in 15 minutes. Please make all final purchases at the ship store and return your audio tour equipment. Oh, God. Thank you We're shipping you right you. now. Oh, <laughs> Point is, Riku was there for you, and you should reciprocate that. He's the OTP. Next, we have Vegeta, the OG Sundere. Uh, I love him. Uh, he's my waifu. And, of course, next we have my uh, better waifu, uh, Stan. I love Stan. It would have been funnier if he showed up. Uh, so, who is this even for? It's just the worst. You're, you're fucking shipping. Mail fantasy. I forgot how I was going to do this slide, so we're going to talk about ships. We're going to talk about the top five worst and best ships. Um, and okay, so worst ship number one or fifth worst ship, we have Ash Gary. Uh, that's a really bad ship, primarily because Ash tangentially works for Gary's grandfather. So there's a lot of power dynamics involved that make consent a re really sticky situation. Number four, we have uh, Zuko Katara. Uh, stop doing that. It's awful. The only acceptable ship from Avatar is Aang Azula. Everything else doesn't make sense. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Marco X Tom. Uh, don't do that. There are, there, there are a lot of ships you can do from Marco that are acceptable in uh, Star Butterfly. Tom is not one of them. Uh, number two, we have uh, Harry Potter X Tom Riddle, <laughs> which A, exists, B, someone drew it as a manga, and see it as a photo bucket's watermark on it. Yeah. That makes it fantastic. And of course, the worst ship of all time is JDX Elliot from Scrubs. Uh, they're terrible together. Stop pretending otherwise. Do you have anything to say on that one? I agree with that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> see, that's why we bring in uh, diff people of differing ideologies, because occasionally they agree with us. And that makes us more right. And now we're going to bring in the top five best ships. Number one is, of course, Jackie Chan and, Hi and Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seen here in their uh, only acceptable personas. Number two, we have Barack Obama, Joe Biden. Uh, it doesn't matter how many fanfics you've written about your best girl and you shipping yourself with them or shipping anyone with them. It can't capture the raw love and emotion between these two men in this photo here. No hentai can be that emotionally evocative or sexually explicit. Next, we have uh, Princess Terdina and Tom. That's a totally acceptable <laughs> ship. Good job, I like it. Uh, number two best ship is Me X Sarah. <laughs> uh, we belong together. She's like six. Yeah, not in dinosaur years. In dinosaur years, she's an adult, unlike Megami. And then... Uh, of course, the number words. one ship is Vegeta X Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why the fuck would you ship anything else except sometimes me X Sarah from the Land Before Time? <laughs> now, the thing is with shipping is sometimes you go beyond doing it with the characters. Uh, between characters and you do it with yourself. Because maybe you're watching an anime and one of the characters says... I think I've taken a liking to you. And you fail to realize that they're talking to the character in the show and not you, because you've become so emotionally invested in the universe. So then you start taking them out on dates. And uh, you don't, don't do that. This is, this is why they keep anime conventions away from the public eye in places like basements and aircraft carriers. Um, 
And like, get get a better food. Treat her right. I know that you're not going to go on a date with a girl because you're afraid it means you're cheating on your waifu. And it doesn't. She's not dating you. She's already dating me. Because I get all the waifus. Next, we have a kind of ubiquitous problem that we really need to talk about, which is the protagonist be che treating the girl with like some basic level of human decency and then earning the right, the exclusive rights to them forever. But you missed the real travesty. Mm -hmm. The physics behind the boob stream. We, we realize that doing boob physics is an entire panel in and of itself. And a video game. Mm -hmm. You mean Dead or Alive Ultimate Beach Volleyball 3? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or what? Uh, Senren Kagura? Right. Sen Senren Kagura? There yeah. we go. Senren yeah. So, to give some examples... Boob ninjas. To give some examples of how this often comes off as very contrived and why it's kind of a bad thing, we're going to talk about uh, that's, uh, is it okay to pick up girls in a dungeon? Great name for an anime. No. no. Now, there's this character who's part of an oppressed class, so, like, everyone treats her like garbage, and there's not even other members of her oppressed class to, like, have friends with, so she has no positive relationships at all. So all the protagonist had to do was, like, pay her the same amount that, she, uh, that she's owed and, like, treat her like a human being, and now she's in love with him forever. Um, now, I know what you might be thinking. This kind of thing is probably good, right? It teaches guys to be, like, nice to girls and, you know, like human beings or whatever. But no, that's not how it works. Instead, what it does is it teaches guys that, hey, if I show some basic human decency for like five minutes, I am owed sex now. Um, so it creates this whole idea of the nice guy where you get these like weird text messages that are like, hi, and then you're like, I don't really have time for this right now. And then they're like, well, I was gonna be nice to you and fix your life forever, but now that's over because you're such a bitch. Um, so it created I'll nice treat guys. You right. Yeah, I'll treat Jesus you right. Uh, so really, it just created the red pill, and uh, it's a serious issue. So, Andrew. Yes. You said you like harem anime. Yes. What? What? How, how? How? I think we have thoroughly debunked this entire genre, and proven without a shadow of a doubt that it's trash. So, I can't deny the fact that harem anime is inherently trash. So we won. But, just like when you're in Plato's Calypolis, looking at the, the good, there's many different fragments to it, so you really have to look at it. It's like a Marvel movie's not going to go in the best picture of the Academy Awards, but it can still be entertaining and good for you. It doesn't mean it's terrible. I mean, I think if your argument justifies the Suicide Squad movie existing, you have a problem. <laughs> I'm not Marvel. Deny that. <laughs> Joker should have been the main character, like main villain, but that's a whole other thing. No, but like, there's there's good harem anime. You've got things like Baka Monogatari, which slightly functions as a harem. Like, I'd argue quintessential quintile. I don't know, you said like, harem anime was trash. It is, but there are some decent ones, like Steins Gate. I, yeah, but you said harem anime is trash. It is so trash. <laughs> Inherently, the flaw is that they. Uh, harem anime goes on the thing where you have one dimensional characters that all fill different types of roles. There isn't really most character development, so you can't really have a good fucking story behind it. But it can still, when you live a holistic approach, be a good anime genre. Kind of like Shonen. Wait, that's a good genre? That's the <laughs> next one of these panels. <laughs> that are just straight isekai. Yeah, isekai's bad, and I love it. <laughs> no, but no, like, it's a harem anime if you treat it from the idea of romance. Like, it's a nice thing if it's done well, if there's character development, if you see people actually grow. It's just very rare. You're only going to find it in manga, or really old anime. Or so somehow in quintessential quintuplets. Uh, don't be a snake. It, Please don't end up being a snake. He's going to end up with Itsuki, it's going to be First Girl, and it's going to be every other fucking harem anime ever made. <laughs> yeah. Search your feelings, you know it to be true. Yeah. It could be Nino. No. Uh, I mean, I'm rooting for Nino because she's literally a train. And uh, Joe Biden loves trains, and I want Joe Biden in my life. So Nino's a train, but no, it, it's each. As long as we all accept. I that. like how this has devolved as, into. As long as we all accept the fact that Reina is not an acceptable option, <laughs> it's his sister. Yeah, fix the protagonist. <laughs> Where are the emails? Actually, it's one of the few anime where the protagonist is actually a good character. Okay, so you can follow us on Twitter, fifthgen.pk, and then you can follow us on YouTube, fifthgen is in Pokemon. We upload these onto YouTube. Um, and the Anime Convention Academy game has been cancelled uh, due to gratuitous use of Ted Cruz. 
Uh, they, they decided that was worse than nudity. So uh, thank you for coming to our panel.